Good evening, everyone, respected members of council and your worship. My name is Isra Abdel Rahim, a youth lead at Action Dignity. I'm honored to be here in front of you and thankful for the opportunity to voice my concerns. I'm also a racialized student and a recipient of the subsidized transit pass. I am one of the 300,000 Calgarians who will be devastated by the 250% increase in transit fares. I'm asking the City Council to maintain the current transit services and fare structure and reconsider the plan to reduce the budget for affordable housing and community services that me and my family depend on. As a, as a racialized student who is supporting myself, time is precious. A delay in bus times or an increase in fares from a sole perspective is seen as an inconvenience. But at the rate that young people are trying to compensate in all aspects of life, this largely contributes to life in Alberta, especially Calgary, being unsustainable. Affordable transportation is at the heart of accessibility. In order to be a working young person, an educated young person, an involved young person, and a contributor to society, transportation is crucial for me. Five dollars and thirty cents. For some, that's the cost of a coffee. For people who don't have to worry about increased tuition rates, reduced youth wages, limited social supports, and reduced quality of public education, it's not much at all. But cost, and what is considered an essential service, is all relative. This is an increase that could be the difference between whether or not a young person eats that day. A 250% fare increase is a lot for me. Now, despite my personal struggles, I must shine light on how, in some ways, I am privileged. I have an extremely supportive single mother who works as hard as she can and, in turn, provides me with everything I need. As a working young person, I know that I don't work out of necessity to keep my head above water. Even during the hardest of times, I knew that I would have enough to eat and a house to live in. But I look at peers who struggle financially more than I ever have, and the youth who are working right now to put food on the table and wouldn't have the luxury of time to be here, and I can only imagine how damaging this cost increase must be for them, as it already is for me. I'm a young person who is doing all that I am supposed to do, and more. I work when I can, I do very well in school, I volunteer regularly, I'm a youth lead at Action Dignity and make constant efforts to improve my school and local community. I've heard before that the solution for people like me is to work harder, but I am working as hard as I can, and it seems that it's never enough. Please do not increase the low-income transit pass. This is a necessity for me as a student and for my family. Just like the libraries and other social services, public transit is an essential service, a social safety net for those who have fallen through the cracks of a system that is no fault of their own. Closing the funding gap in a transit pass is an inch closer to closing the gap in social inequality in this city. I am a high school student. Together with the youth group at Action Dignity and in my school, I will be casting my first vote in 2021. I am sorry that I do not have a solution for you about where to get that money. But as people's representatives, I trust that you can find one. Please have the political will to do so and examine where your priorities lie. If you say that the youth are the future, please invest in my future. By standing here in front of you, I am doing my job as your constituent. I am holding you accountable. I am a working citizen in our city. I can only hope, as an elected official, that you will do yours in return. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, Mayor, Council Members. I thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to speak. And I wonder if, how many of you have tried the new holiday drink. You can find it at your local coffee shop, and funny enough, it's exactly or a little bit very close to the to the approved property tax rate increase of 3.03%. I'd like to point out that I work in the private sector and I, like many other Calgarians, have been affected by the economic downturn. I was born and raised in Africa, 
but now very grateful and very thankful to be a proud citizen of this great country and of this beautiful city. However, I have seen firsthand how negativity and job loss can do to the in individual morale and the growth of a country. And to think that for the price of a latte a month, we can not only save the jobs of Calgarians, but can continue to rebuild our city. As you can guess, I am for the approved 3.03% tax increase and recommend a smaller percentage of the residential and non-residential tax shift to get us closer to the 50-50. I, I would like to ask if we don't ra raise taxes now, when are we going to raise them? Five to ten years from now when op operational costs are double or even more? What is quite phenomenal is that our tax-supported spending growth over the last few years has remained below population growth plus inflation, yet we need more transportation solutions, police, fire and other community services to support our growing population. <coughs> Council members have said that union workers could be part of the solution. I say, however, one million citizens can be part of the solution for the price of a latte per month. We, know, we now know that there are non-union workers in the city that haven't had a raise for up to four years, but yet living cost increases. What do we say to them? I hope the word thank you comes to mind. Job cut paints a grim picture for future employees who wants to work in the public sector. We are losing knowledgeable, valuable, skilled people to the private sector. And speaking of the private sector and the topic of privatizing a portion of the black bins, I would like to remind the people that private sector companies are in the business of making money. I fear that we will see price hikes for the basic need that has been successfully provided by the city for no profit and that the quality of this service will decrease in the future. If we are seeking to save money in the city, should we not look at things like cancelling the expense accounts of city officials? Can we combine or merge wards to have less councillors? I know. It doesn't sound nice to hear or to think that you could not have a job. A reminder that if 230 or even more jobs get cut, that this will put an even greater strain on social services like unemployment insurance and mental health support. I cannot imagine how it must feel to come to work each day for the past few months, knowing that our council is considering cutting out your job and that there are fellow citizens out there wishing for you to be fired. In 2013, we were devastated by the floods. We stood together as Calgarians to overcome. In 2016, we had the fires in the north. We raced to help and we were Alberta strong. I call on my fellow citizens now to stand together to help our city and each other. Ladies and gentlemen, gas and food prices go up. We are shocked for a few days, but we adapt, we change and move forward. I think we will be able to adapt and change to the loss of one latte a month. So next time when we stand in line for that holiday drink, that muffin or hamburger, let us ask ourselves if we are able to be part of the solution. Thank you very much.